So I guess I now have to tell the story how some poor kid from California meets some kid from New Jersey and we become lifelong friends. So hello everybody, friends, family, fellow shipmates, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. So it's truly an honor for me to join you all on this special day. A day that has been a tradition of the United States Naval Service since the late 1700s. A momentous, a momentous day, not only for Lieutenant Commander Mirabal, but for the entire family. I want to thank you very much for inviting me here today to be part of this great event. Now, I'd love to tell you all about Lieutenant Commander Mirabal's most impressive 20 year career. But the truth is, we haven't served together since February of 2002, when he was only six years into his 20 years of service. So like the rest of you, I had to read the program to figure out what he's been doing for the last four years. <laughs> but I do think one thing we can all agree upon is 20 years of doing anything is pretty impressive. To do 20 years, over 20 years of naval service is something to truly be commended. And I believe that commands our respect. So it all started back in February of 1996 when a skinny kid from Inglewood, New Jersey raised his right hand. Still pretty skinny, not doing too bad. <laughs> Better than some of us. And swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Some of you weren't even born yet. And those of you who were, think back of what you were doing in early 1996. I, myself, have fond memories of chasing my now wife around the college parties of Chico, California. But I digress. I would like to offer some reference points, especially for the younger folks in the crowd, and just to refresh the memories of the rest of us. President Clinton was Commander-in-Chief, and may very well again be soon. <laughs> Oprah had just started her book club. The FBI finally captured the damn Unabomber. And everyone was dancing the Macarena that year. <laughs> For those of you that don't remember, Lou and Mark would be happy to do <laughs> Tell us a little bit later on. And of course we all cried when Renee Zellwinger uttered the line to Tom Cruise, you had me at hello. But it wasn't all Independence Day and Jerry Maguire, who couldn't forget the ninth most popular movie that year, at least according to Box Office Mojo, which seems legit. That's right. The bird cage. Way to go, Mr. Lane. And of course, finally, Lieutenant Commander would be upset if I didn't mention that miraculous comeback by the New York Yankees against the Atlanta Braves during the World Series. Right? Even the Knicks were good back then. They were able to beat anybody who didn't have a Michael Jordan on their team. So now that I've set the stage, I would like to highlight a few accomplishments unique to Lieutenant Commander Mirabal's career. After boot camp, he graduated from the Navy's nuclear power program. And let's face it, you pretty much have to be a genius to get through that. Yeah. I think so anyway, as a graduate. <laughs> After that, he was sent to his uh, first of three sea commands. All right, the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, a nuclear-powered aircraft carrier out of Norfolk, Virginia. Truly a floating city. Three and a half football fields long, 24 stories tall, flew right around 5,000 crew members when we have our full complement of airway. All right, it even has its own airport. It has a mall, it has a 7-Eleven, it has a TV studio, and it even has a Starbucks, no joke. <laughs> Here's where we met, January 1998, what I can only assume was the highlight of his career. 
Now, I'd love to tell you of great tales of uncommon valor and war fighting operations, but it was 1998. The Cold War had ended seven years earlier, and we had not yet begun the war on terror. So our two six-month deployments we performed together, we primarily complained about the unbearable heat in the engine room. No air conditioning down there, so it was not uncommon to deal with 120 plus degree temperatures. And the unbearable smell of sharing your bedroom with 180 other. <laughs> But the most arduous part of what we had to deal with, I believe, at that time, was that we weren't in any combat operations. We were young sailors. We weren't making a lot of money. And in six months, we had to stop in 11 different ports. It was rough. Right? Who had the money to visit that many countries? Not me. I was already married by then. <laughs> so it should come as no surprise that any, uh, to anyone who knows Lieutenant Commander Maribal, that he found the conditions in the engine room too harsh and decided air conditioning is really what he longed for. <laughs> Lou has always worked hard to get what he wants, and so naturally, he got his air conditioning. After graduating from Officer Candidate School, he went to USS Cheyenne, SSN 773, a Los Angeles class submarine. A whole 360 feet long, 33 feet wide. Air conditioned, yes, but he also had to endure his third six month deployment in a metal tube with 120 of his closest friends about a thousand feet under the water. You may have your air conditioning friend. <laughs> <laughs> However, because he is truly selfless and dedicated to what he does, Air conditioning be damned, he selflessly volunteered to deploy to Afghanistan in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. So to serve with someone who has been both to the surface fleet, the submarine fleet, and has been deployed boots on the ground is a very, very unique accomplishment, and we should all appreciate that. From there, best I can tell you, the highlights of his career involved several naval based softball championship trophies. <laughs> he was really good at softball. And I'd like to now sum up his career by telling you why I believe, despite not serving with him for the past 14 years, he asked me to be here today. And mom and dad, I primarily place the blame with you two. <laughs> the truth is, once you've made friends, with Lou, you have gained a friend for life. Lou has been an important part of my life and my family's life uh, since day one that we met. He's been there for the birth of my oldest daughters and always treated my son with nothing but care and respect. It has never mattered how many months have passed between conversations. The phone rings, we pick up, and we pick up wherever we left off, normally talking about the Jets and the Yankees. <laughs> and the Lakers and the Dodgers, but uh, he always asks about my family in every conversation. The best example I have of his selflessness and dedication to our friendship is the fact that he has been my re-enlisting officer for the past my past two re-enlistments. For those that are not familiar with that ceremony, normally you decide I'm going to stay Navy and I'm going to do this for a little bit longer. You find a commissioned officer, normally in your command, at least in your geographical area. But when I called Lou and jokingly said, hey, it's time for me to re-enlist, would you like to join me? I was stationed in San Diego and he was stationed in Norfolk, Virginia, and without missing a beat, he said, absolutely, just give me the date. So he flew with Mark across the country to be my re-enlisting officer. No questions about it. And I really, really appreciate it. All right, so back to mom and dad. I already know how tremendously proud you are of your son. You have every right to be. It's parents like you 
where we get men like this. It could not have been easy to send Lou off all those many years ago and share him with our great nation. And I, for one, truly appreciate it. You have taught him right. He's a real credit not only to our Navy, to, but to his entire family. Although for selfish reasons, I'd love to see him stay, I have no doubt that Lou is doing the best for him and Mark and his family. And I can say without a doubt that our Navy is now a stronger organization because of the 22 years of service that he provided us. All right, babes. <laughs> shipmate, I have and I will always consider you a very dear friend. On behalf of my family, our Navy, I wish you, Mark, nothing but the best. May God bless you, your family, fair winds, and falling seas, my friend.